Hey everyone, I'm Jordan Spivey, joined with my dad, Travis Spivey, and if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of our awesome science videos. In today's video, we will discuss invasive species and how they can negatively impact their environment. So, so let's, let's do this. Our learning targets for today are number one, I can identify and describe invasive species. And number two, I can explain how invasive species negatively impact their environment. So what is an invasive species? An invasive species is an organism that is not from or native to a particular area. Invasive species can cause great economic and environmental harm to the new area that they live in. Not all non-native species are invasive. For example, most food crops grown in the United States, including popular varieties of wheat, tomatoes, and rice, are not native to the region. They provide great benefit to the area though. To be invasive, a species must adapt to the new area easily. It must reproduce quickly. It must harm property, the economy, or the native plants and animals of the region. Many invasive species are introduced into a new region accidentally. Zebra mussels are native to the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea in Central Asia. Zebra mussels arise in the Great Lakes of North America accidentally, stuck to large ships that travel between the two regions. There are now so many zebra mussels in the Great Lakes that they now have threatened native species. Now let's take a look at how and why invasive species are introduced to a new area. Some species are brought to a new area on purpose. Often, these species are introduced as a form of pest control. Other times, introduced species are brought in as pets or decorative displays. People and businesses that import these species do not anticipate the consequences though. Even scientists are not always sure how a species will adapt to a new environment. Introduced species multiply too quickly and become invasive. For example, in 1949, five cats were brought to Marion Island, a part of South Africa in the Southern Indian Ocean. The cats were introduced as pest control for mice. By 1977, about 3,400 cats were living on the island, endangering the local bird population. Other invasive species descended from pets that escaped or were released into the wild. Many people have released pet Burmese pythons into the Everglades, a swampy area of South Florida. The huge snakes can grow to 6 meters or approximately 20 feet in length. Pythons, native to the jungles of Southeast Asia, have few natural predators in the Everglades. They feast on many local species, including white ibis and lipkin, two types of wading birds. Now let's take a look at how invasive species threaten their local environment. Many invasive species thrive because they outcompete native species for food. Bighead and silver carp are two large species of fish that escaped from fish farms in the 1990s and are now coming in the Missouri River of North America. These fish feed on plankton, tiny organisms floating in the water. Many native fish species, such as paddlefish, also feed on plankton. The feeding cycle of the paddlefish is slower than that of the carp. There are now so many carp in the lower Missouri River that paddlefish do not have enough food. Invasive species sometimes thrive because there are no predators that hunt them in the new location. Brown tree snakes were accidentally brought to Guam, an island in the South Pacific, in the late 1940s or early 1950s. No animals on Guam hunted the snakes, but the island was filled with birds, rodents, and other small animals that the snakes hunt. The snakes quickly multiplied, and they are responsible for the extinction of 9 of the island's 11 forest dwelling bird species. Many invasive species destroy the habitats they stay in. As a result, this harms the survival of the plants and animals that originally stayed in that environment. Nutria are large rodents or rats native to South America. Ranchers brought them to North America in the 1900s, hoping to raise them for their fur. Some nutria were released into the wild when the ranchers failed. Today, they are a major pest in the Gulf Coast and Chesapeake Bay regions of the United States. Nutria eat tall grasses and rushes. These plants are vital to the region's marshy wetlands. They provide food, nesting sites, and shelter for many organisms. They also help secure sediment and soil, preventing the erosion of land. Nutria are destroying the area's food well and habitat by consuming the wetland grasses. Some invasive species do great harm to the economy like kudzu and water hyacinth. 
Order hyacinth is a plant native to South America that has become an invasive species in many parts of the world. People often introduce the plant which grows in water because of its pretty flowers. But the plant spreads quickly, often choking out native wildlife. In Lake Victoria, Uganda, water hyacinth grew so thickly that boats could not get through it. Some ports were closed. Water hyacinth prevented sunlight from reaching on the water. Plants and algae could not grow, preventing fish from feeding and reproducing. Lake Victoria's fishing industry declined. Invasive species can also damage property. Small zebra mussels clog the cooling systems and boat engines, while larger ones have damaged water pipes at power plants throughout the Great Lakes region. In summary, invasive species destroy local environments and economies. They often cost local areas millions of dollars to fix the problems that they have created. Invasive species choke out or kill the natural life in their new areas, whether it's plants or animals, by outcompeting these natural species for food, space, and other resources. Question, if you were in charge of an invasive species task force, what would you do to get rid of invasive species? And that's our video for today. Now let's check your knowledge to see how proficient you are with explaining how and why keystone species have a major impact on their ecosystems by taking our video quiz. Use your electronic device to scan the QR code at the top right of the screen or you can click the link in the description box below the video to take the quiz. Remember, 80% are hired for proficiency, record your associate proficiency sheet, and if you don't get it the first time, you better keep going because it's not over until you win. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also click that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our awesome videos. Peace and have a positive productive day.